The word redeem means next kin's folk. Watch this. It's an act as kinsmen to do the part of next of kin. That's what redeemer means. The kinsman redeemer, y'all heard about that? You remember Ruth? It's, watch this. The kinsman redeemer is a male relative who, who, according to various laws of the Pentateuch, had the privilege or responsibility to act on behalf of a relative who was in trouble. <laughs> Peter said, thou art the Christ. You are my big brother. You are the one that now you can act on my behalf. You, you can stand up to the bully for me. Come on, death was a bully. But Jesus rose from the dead and said, death, where is your sting? Come on, great. where is your power? Are you hearing me? That the kinsman, the kinsman redeemer has come on the scene. Do you know who your Jesus is? He's taken the responsibility to act on your behalf. Watch this. He can, he can act on behalf of a relative who is, watch this, was in trouble or who's in danger or whoever's in need. Woo. The Hebrew term for kinsman redeemer designates one who delivers or rescues. We thought it had been he. We thought he was the one that was going to rescue us, but it looks like he needed someone to rescue him. And Jesus says in Luke 24, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Can I speak to that to a moment? Listen, church, you can't stop trying to walk in streams and camps. Don't, don't, you know, we, 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 we got, it's, we're the healing camp. What do you mean the healing camp? I believe all of it. Healing, deliverance, he's my rescuer, he's my rock, he's my strong tower, he's my redeemer. Come on, somebody. I believe the whole Bible. I believe every aspect of who he is. It means Jesus comes as our kinsman redeemer, our protector. He's the one who took responsibility to act on behalf of fallen man who was desperately in trouble. If you don't know him today, you're going you're gonna to come to receive him today. I'm going to tell you who he is. Watch this. He came to act on behalf of us, a fallen man who was desperately in trouble, needy and in danger to sin. He became our kinsman redeemer, designated to deliver and rescue us. From the penalty of sin. If you don't know him. Make up in your heart to know him today. Jesus' mandate was not only to die for us. But watch this. To bring forth the grace of God's delivering power. To rescue and reconcile us back to the Father. Come on. Watch this. Reconcile means put us back in position are y'all hearing me to put us back in position thou art the Christ you came to put us back into position you are you, you came you are my redeemer you came to bring me to put me back in my place of favor to restore me Matthew 16 and 17, watch what Jesus says because Peter, I mean, yeah, because Peter gives him this answer. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Blessed are you, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The word blessed here means, watch this, it's probably when God extends his benefits. It's the advantages he confers. It means there's an advantage to having this revelation. Are y'all hearing me? There's a benefit to knowing who he is. There's a benefit to having this level of revelation. It means the word blessed means to become long or large. Thank you, God. The revelation of Jesus Christ expands your borders. <laughs> it extends you beyond the limitations of others. Bless. Watch this. It describes a believer in enviable 
fortune. He's fortunate. Uh, an enviable, fortunate position from receiving God's promised favor. It means that this level of revelation will carry you into a level of relationship with Christ that others will fail to experience. Not Hear me, not because he doesn't want you to walk with him, but what I've showed you in Luke 24 is it's possible to walk with him and not recognize that he's walking with you. You could be pouting, complaining about a situation, and he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but you fail to see him in your circumstance or your experience because you've allowed it to limit your level of revelation of who he is. Come on, we sing about how great he is, but when we face a great problem, all of a sudden God seems small. Okay, I'll give you David as an example. All of the armies of Israel... All of the armies were fearful of the giant Goliath because they looked at how big he was. But it was the revelation of who God was that made Goliath look small in David's sight. Are you hearing me? Because he realized that I serve a greater God. And, and if you don't understand this revelation right now, you'll continue to have limited experiences with God, especially in this time of crisis and pandemic, because your revelation of Jesus is too small. Who is he? Who? And I love this. Who do you say? Not who do I say? Your experience with God is predicated on the revelation you have concerning him. Y'all remember, the only one that was willing to get out of the boat was Peter. Who was the only one that said, thou art the Christ? Can I submit to you maybe the revelation of who he was? Gave Peter the faith to trust in what he said. That allowed him to, uh, <laughs> to partake of a miracle that nobody else could experience. Are you hearing me? What I'm showing you is the revelation. When you have a revelation of who he is, it lifts you up into a dimension. A place in God where you experience certain levels of favor that other people fail to experience. Not because God is a respect of person, but he is a respecter of faith. Or revelation. The New Living Translation says it. Jesus replied and said, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. Watch this key. We're going to key in on this. Watch this. You did not learn this from any human being. In other words, it was revealed to your heart from the father and not discovered by what everybody else was saying. Notice this. The first thing he asked was, who do men say that I am? What's the talk? What are people saying about Jesus right now? Hmm? I mean, last time I checked, we're talking more about the news than about Jesus. What are people saying? But the most important thing is, what are you saying? Who is he? He says, you didn't get this revelation from people. You didn't get it from what everybody else was saying. It was from a personal relationship. It was personal pursuit. I wonder if Peter was asking God that question. God, I'm following this man. Who is he? <laughs> Tell me more. Who, who, who is this man? I want to know more about him. I feel so undone when I'm around him. Remember Luke 5? Depart from me. For I'm a, Peter said, Lord, I'm a wicked man. He said, Peter, rise up, man. This day I'm going to make you fisher of man. Who is this man who found me in my mess? Come on, somebody. Who is the one that came to redeem me when I was lost? Who was the one that redeemed me when I was a cussing sailor? Are y'all hearing me? That's what Peter was. He was, a, he was a cussing fisherman. You know, who is the one that redeemed me? That found me when I was considered ignorant and unlearned. Who gave me purpose when I was shady, feathery. Who was the one that found me and changed my name? Yes. Who is this man? 
In other words, you didn't learn this from any human. You got this from a relation. You got this from relationship through encounter. Revelation or uncovering through relationship. Are you hearing me? It's one thing for you to read about him. It's another thing for you to encounter the one you read about. They all read about him. We thought it was he. That's how we are. You know, we read scriptures. We heard people talk about how he's a savior. But have you experienced him? Or rather, have you acknowledged him? This is, why this is why praise is important. This is why it's important for you to acknowledge God and all the things he's done in your life. Because if you're not careful, times like this will put you in a place of pity and a place of complaint. But then if you just took the time when things were good to acknowledge God, if it wasn't for you, these, wouldn't, these things wouldn't have happened in my life. And I'm going to mark these moments down because there are going to be times where I need to come back to these moments of thankfulness so I can recognize and acknowledge who you are. So I'll still be able to see you when I'm going through. That's the question. Can you see him when you're going through? Can you acknowledge the fact that he'll never leave you nor forsake you? Don't you realize the Holy Spirit don't bail on you when you're going through? And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And he hasn't bailed out on you in this, this season. He didn't say, I'll come back after this is finished. Talk to me while I'm in heaven. <laughs> Sometimes our doctrine. Let me make this point. We don't need more information about Jesus. We need to be able to see him for who he is. We need a revelation of who he is. Can I speak? Let me talk to you on revelation for a moment. Look at this. Paul, there's a reason why Paul did this. To turn to Ephesians. I don't know if they're putting this on the screen for you. Ephesians. Um, if we're not, we're going to get that fixed. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. <clears throat> the text says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Notice this. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, what am I praying? Y'all ready? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom, you ready? And the revelation in the knowledge of him. Y'all see that? That he gives you a spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of him. Who is the him? Somebody say, our Christ. In other words, the word wisdom here denotes the general gift of spiritual illumination, revelation, and the capacity of apprehending the revealed or perceiving the, the, the drift and the meaning of what God makes known. I pray that you can understand the meaning of what God was making known in him. Um, so that it might be a real revelation to you. That's what he's saying. I pray that, you, that God will give you the, the, the gift of the spiritual, of, of spiritual illumination or revelation. Remember what he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. P, Paul prays and says that I pray that the Father of glory will give you a spirit of wisdom, pretty much that God will do for you what he did for Peter. That you come into the knowledge, and, and not just the knowledge of who he is, but that it turns into a wisdom that turns into application. That it turns into a true and a real revelation in the knowledge of him. It's the, the word here, knowledge, signifies a perfect and thorough knowledge. That you come into a perfect and thorough and complete knowledge. He says, now since I heard of your faith in Jesus, what I'm praying is that you really come to know who he is. This is the same Paul that said that, man, I long to know him and the power of his resurrection. Then he goes on to say, not that I've obtained, but this one thing I do, I press toward the mark. I'm continuing to pursue him that I may know him in the fullness of who he is. There's a side of Jesus that you have yet to experience. And are you pursuing him right now? You got the time for it. 
Are you pursuing them like you pursuing them Netflix and Amazon movies and, 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 and binge watching? You should be binging Jesus. That's what you, you come on, come on. You, before, you, you, the, the, the excuse was, I didn't have any time. Well, you've had about a month and a half. Come on. How much consecration are we doing? Are we pursuing him right now? Because we're going to need the knowledge of who he is. And we're going to need to know how to apply that in our life in these upcoming days. Because the revelation of who he is will predicate how we respond in our experiences and determine the level or determine the fullness of that experience as we move forward. Matter of fact, Ephesians 4. Look at this. Jump over to the fourth chapter, verse 12. What do you think? That this, is, this was the purpose of the fivefold ministry gifts. The purpose of the fivefold ministry gifts. <clears throat> verse 12 says this. The purpose of the fivefold ministry gifts is for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Watch this. Till we all come into the unity of faith. Somebody say and. And of the knowledge of of the Son of God to a perfect man, to a complete man, to the measure and of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It goes on to say this. Watch this. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. Watch this, that we may grow up in all things into who is him? Christ, who is the head. This is why we come to the house of God, to get a further revelation of who he is. Coming into the fullness of who he is. Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. Uh, there's a statement that says that everything. Matter of fact, let me let me let me just read this. Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. <clears throat> it says, um, "As His divine power has given to us all things, He's given to us all things." that pertain to life and godliness. Y'all know how you're going to get them? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him. I need you to write this down. I need a revelation of the Christ. I need a revelation of our Christ. It's the things that reveal that belong to us. This is why we need a revelation of Jesus. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Right? There's a very powerful statement in this text. It says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are, somebody say reveal, belong to us. And to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. I want to deal with this a little bit because it's the things that are revealed that belong to me. See, it was when the scales were removed from their eyes in Luke 24 that they saw him for who uh, he is in the midst of their disappointment. It's the things that are revealed that belong to us. This is what the book of Revelation is all about. You ever read the opening verse of the book of Revelations? This is what it says. The verse, very first one, the chapter one, verse one says, <laughs> the revelation of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelations is about the revelation of Jesus Christ. About the revelation, it's about the revealing of Jesus Christ to the world. Okay. The word revelation, its Greek word is apocalypse. You hear everybody, we preparing for the apocalypse? Well, you better be preparing. No, 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 no. This is why you don't have to fear in the last days. 
because the last days we shall see him as he is. Come on, somebody. When you belong to him, you ain't fearful in this day because you know your salvation draws nigh. You know that in the last days, we're going to see him for who he is. There'll be no doubt. <laughs> the word apocalypse means, y'all ready? Uncovering. You listen to the news too much. The great apocalypse should excite you because it's the uncovering. I'm not saying there won't be difficult times. By no means. But when you have a revelation of who he is and the one that's with you in the furnace, it gives you a trust that surpasses all understanding. When you come to know him, that's why it's so important in this season that we focus on knowing him. Because it's the revelation of who he is that gives us the strength to endure any difficult times and hardships. The word apocalypse means uncovering, unveiling, or disclosure. Apocalypse is one of the three words referring to the second coming of Christ. The other two words are epiphania, meaning appearing in parousia, which means presence or coming. Out of the three words, apocalypse is a grander and more comprehensive word. And it includes not merely the things shown and seen, but watch this but the interpretation in the unveiling, or the unveiling of the same. So not just what you see. Apocalypse means you understand what you see. It's revealed. So watch this. Christ's first coming was an epiphania, an appearing. But the apocalypse will be more glorious. It's going to be the interpretation. It's going to be the revealing of the fullness of who he is. May my prayers, Father, reveal your son to us. Make us aware and bring us into the fullness of who our Christ is. You want to know why? Because go back to Matthew 16 and 18. I'll tell you why this is important. <clears throat> After Peter, through revelation, professes who he is watch what Jesus says somebody say and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I'll build my church wait a minute thou art Peter Peter's revelation and profession of the Christ brought identity to himself How do I say this? Listen, we are built. This is what this text is saying. We are built upon the revelation of who he is. The church is built upon the revelation of who he is. Our life is established upon the revelation of our promised redeemer. This is why it's critical to know him. Revelation is critical to a successful walk as a believer and follower of Christ. It's upon your revelation of who he is that builds your relationship with him and determines the level of faith and power that you actually walk in. This will determine your revelation of who he is will determine the level of peace that you'll have and that you'll experience. If you don't know him as a protector, then what happens is you fail to acknowledge when he's protecting if you don't know him as a provider, you fail to see his provision. It's the revelation of who he is that determines your level of faith. Okay, Israel, what do you think God was trying to do before he brought them to Canaan? He was using every experience to reveal his name. <laughs> he was trying to reveal to them, I'm your provider. Water from a rock, manna from heaven. He was trying to reveal to them when he fought for them at Rephidim that I'm your banner. He was trying to reveal to them that I'm your righteousness. He was trying to reveal to them that I'm your great shepherd. I'm the one that leads you, that protects you, that keeps you warm at night. 
and, and, and covers the sun from scorching you during the day. Are you hearing me? Every experience with him was supposed to lead into an encounter that gave us a greater revelation of who he was so that when Israel got to the borders of Canaan, they would have had the revelation that you're not grasshoppers in your own sight. That you are covenant children of the most high God. And if he tells you to possess the land, you already have everything you need to possess it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It was the revelation that David had concerning God that gave him the, 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 that, that, that gave him the, the faith, the trust to stand on who he was, to face Goliath. And it put his name in history. Somebody said, I need a revelation of who he is. Your revelation determines your level of resolve. You need to write that down. Your revelation determines your level of resolve that you'll have in your walk with him. No revelation, no resolve. You'll be tossed to and fro. Not just evil doctrine that comes from man, but even the agenda that comes from the kingdom of darkness that's pushed out through media. When you don't have a revelation of who he is. It will determine your level of transformation. Oh yeah. Your revelation of who he is will determine your level of transformation that you'll experience. Or that is actually manifested in your life. It's the image that you behold of him that changes you. Okay. Y'all remember this? When he went to his own hometown, what revelation did they have of him? He was the carpenter's son. So at best he can build you a house. <laughs> That's some of us. We just want God. We can believe him for a new house. We can believe him for a new car. But can you believe him to heal your body? Wow. Do you just know him as a carpenter? Or do you know him as the promised redeemer? Which one? Wow. Hmm? See, if he was just a carpenter, you might get a house. But if he's the prince of peace, woo, he becomes your shelter in a storm. Are you hearing me? Knowing who he is, watch this, back to Peter validates your identity and helps you understand who you are. Write, th write that down. Knowing who he is validates your identity and helps you understand who you are. It's the revelation of who he is that changes your life forever. You want to be changed? Get a revelation of who he is. Get a revelation of who you received, whether it was at the altar whether it was on the street, whether it was at your house, who is he? The revelation of who he is changes your life forever. You don't believe me? We'll close with this text. Let's ask the woman at the well. Watch this. Go to John 4. Go to John 4. We're going we're gonna to walk this text and we'll, we'll close through here. We'll continue next. Sunday. I'm excited about this journey. I don't know about you. I'm excited about this journey of rediscovering and posturing myself to allow God to reveal to me my Christ, to give me a greater revelation. Come on, somebody, so I can be firmly planted in my faith. John 4, <clears throat> let's start at verse 1. I'm going to read. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to have you highlight a few places that will, that's going to sum up everything that we said. You're going to see. That it's the revelation of who he is that changes your life forever. John 4 verse 1 says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that uh, the Pharisees had heard, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and dis baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea, Jesus left Judea, and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. Why? Because he had to reveal himself. All right, watch this. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat uh, thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, watch this, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? 
For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. But might I say, he was much more than a Jew. Watch this. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew, highlight this, the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. In other words, if you recognized, are you hearing me? See, in other words, you about to miss it. He doesn't know, you, you about to miss your blessing. You, you about to miss your opportunity. Come on. How many times have we missed opportunities with God because we failed to recognize them when he showed up? Because he didn't look the way you thought he should look. He didn't do it the way you thought he should do it. God is working in some of y'all lives right now. Jesus is working in your life right now, and you're going to miss him. You were looking for him to show up a certain kind of way. He says to the woman, if you knew, if you recognize the gift, if you recognize the one that was given from God for you, you'd be asking me. Give me a drink. He said, and I would give you living water. I'll give you, I would be the one, I came to give you water that satisfies and cleanses. I came to give you water that leads to life. You're about to miss it because you're failing to recognize. Because as I said before, your revelation of who he is changes your life forever. Watch. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? And are you greater than our father Jacob? Notice this is a discussion about who he is now. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? And drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said it to him, Sir, give me this water, because I'm thirsty, that I might not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I, I, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, I know. You said, well, I have no husband. For, the, for you have had five husbands. <laughs> so now, now, now let me say this. When you come to know him, he going to reveal some stuff to you that you might be a little skeptical. But let him keep exposing. Come on, somebody said, let him expose it. Because this is how he cleanses you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you, some of us are failing to recognize him because you're trying to hide stuff that you need to be exposing. You need to let him reveal what he needs to reveal in your life so he can give you this living water. So you can find satisfaction in this season. I believe part of what's going on is God allowed for a drought, for us to experience a drought, so we can really get, he can expose the things in our life and bring us to a place of glory. He said to her, go get your husbands. You said right. You had five. The one you wits, not yours. Y'all ready? The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. <laughs> you done told me all about myself. Our fathers worshipped. Y'all ready? Watch this. On this mountain. And the Jews say that in Jerusalem, in a place where one ought to worship, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Your worship that you do. He says, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. He says, but the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, here we go. Watch this. So now we get to the place of revelation and expectation. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah, who? The Messiah. Watch this. It's coming. Who is called Christ? Everybody was waiting on him. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Y'all ain't hearing me. And when you have an encounter with the, with the Messiah, when you have an encounter with the Christ, it changes your life forever. When you get a revelation, when he reveals himself to you, it changes your life forever. What do you mean? Watch this. At this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman because they didn't even really know him for who he was. And said, no one said to him, they didn't want to be rebuked. What do you seek? 
Oh, why are you talking to her? But notice the woman. After he reveals who he is to her, she leaves her water pot. Now, she came there because she was thirsty. She came there with issues. But when she got a revelation of the Christ, she left what she was using to collect with. Are you hearing me? She left her water pot. It changes your life. You forget you're thirsty now. Watch this. Went her way into the city. It gave her purpose. Watch this. And said to men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the one we've been waiting for? Could this be our promised redeemer? Could this be the Christ? Because if it is, our lives are about to change. Then they went out of the city and came to him. That's part of our problem, man. We, we, introducing, <laughs> we introducing to people everybody but Jesus. They came to him. And in the meantime, his disciples urged them, said, Master, eat. Right? Now let's jump down to verse 39 for the sake of time. They're trying to get him to eat. He says, look, y'all need to open your eyes. Look, the harvest is already ready. I have meat to know. I have meat that you know not of. Uh, it's to do the Father's will. Right? And he tells them, look, the harvest is ready. Just pray for the Lord's sin harbors. Um, laborers. So verse 39, they're coming to him now. And, the, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him. Y'all saw that? Remember when I told y'all earlier? They believed in him because of what? The word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him. Somebody say here, relationship. They urged him to stay with them. I know what she said. I know what my pastor said, Lord. But when I get home, can you stay with me? Come on, somebody. I know we just sung about him. But can I spend a little time with the one we just sung about? I know that he just introduced you to me. But don't leave with him. Can you stay with me a little while longer? Come on, somebody. I know church is over. I know the broadcast is going to end. But Lord, can you just hang out with me a little while longer? Because it ain't enough for me to know you because of what he said. But can you hang out with me a little while longer? Come on, somebody. Do you want him to hang out? Can you just hang out? Watch this. And he obliged. He stayed there two days. Isn't it amazing when God takes time out of his schedule to hang out with you upon your request? Come on, somebody. And many more believed. Y'all ready? And many more believed because of his own word. You see that now. It wasn't just because of her word now. They now believe because they were sitting face to face with the Christ. And they believed because of his own word. Then they turned around and said to the woman, thank you for introducing him to us. But now we believe not because of what you said. For we ourselves have heard him and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. We now know him as the promised redeemer. I want to challenge you today. We're done for today. Who do you say that he is? Don't go in and don't, don't, don't start repeating what you heard now. Other preachers say, don't, don't. Now listen, my point to you is, all we can do is what the woman did. Come see a man. That's what I'm doing today. Matter of fact, that's what we'll title it. Come see a man. Come see a man who told me all about myself. Come see the one who put me back into position. Ain't that what he did for? Come see the one who told me everything about myself. Who told me that the moment I recognize who he is, it changes everything about my life. Come see the man who turned my life upside down. Come see the one who stands with me in the fiery furnace. Come on, ain't that what it said? They saw an image of the one like unto the son of man. Come see the one that's not afraid to walk with me during difficult times. Because I'm telling you, one touch, one glimpse of him, 
And you know what's powerful, guys? We, we, he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He told the disciples in Mark 16 after the commission, he said, man, I'll be with you to the ends of the earth. I'll walk with you through all of this. <laughs> Come on. I know it's difficult, but I'll grab you by the hand. Let's go. Let's walk. Keep your eyes on me. Stay focused on me. In this season, come to know me. Y'all remember that Martha? She was panicked. Go, we, we know, Lord. We know that we're going to see him again someday in the resurrection. He said, Martha, you don't understand who's with you. I am the resurrection. Do you know me? You understand that? And when you come into that level of revelation, dead things <laughs> come alive. Come on, somebody. When you know who he is. There were many things that Jesus couldn't do in his own hometown. Because they only recognized him as the carpenter's son. But when you get a revelation of who he is. The reason it changes your life. Is because it postures and puts you in a position to experience him. In ways that you've never experienced him before. Because now you have a place to place your faith. Set yourself to know him in this season. Reconnect to your Savior. I believe that's what God is calling us to do. Reconnect to your Savior. Let that be your purpose. When you wake up, don't start the day without him. Jesus, reveal yourself to me today. Speak to me. I want to know you. I told God yesterday as, as I was working through this, I said, Lord, I, I want to know you like Paul longed to know you. I want to pursue you. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I don't want to ever feel satisfied. I want to go from preaching and, and sharing with your people. Then when I get home, just feel like I just got to open this thing up and just read a little bit more. I got to study a little bit more. I got to pray a little bit more. God, there's something else I want to know. God, reveal yourself to me. I mean, come on. If you said if, if, if we recognize the one who was asking you for a drink, we would ask of you. Didn't that speak to you? That means you can't go deeper without a revelation because you don't even know what to ask the level of your relationship changes when your revelation of who he is changes kingdom life we're going to dedicate everything we have to pursuing him to knowing him churches you know we always talk about revival and power. I believe revival will come when we recognize the one that's walking with us. We're looking for him and looking for him. But I pray today that the scales will fall from our eyes and we realize that he's been weird with us the whole time. And we'll stop looking past him and start looking to him. I would love for the team to come and we're going to close out today with the song that blesses my heart so. And it just had me on my face, man. One, two o'clock in the morning in my pursuit of him. speaks of how beautiful he is and how everything changes. So what I want you to do is I just want you to worship with us just for a moment. We'll let you go. I sit and the team comes and we're just going to lift our hands and take our eyes off of and our mind off of everything else that doesn't matter. The only one 
person that can save us in this season. The only one. And I love it. He came to redeem us. <laughs> he didn't say just back then. We find shelter. We find provision in him.